last piece of advice before we go if you're on the fence about solo traveling this year if you want to start it but you're scared to i'd say i'd say look at it like this think of it as something you've done and think of something you've done in the past where you had the opportunity or the chance to do something but you said no or you talked yourself out of it and you now feel regret from not going through with that opportunity don't let that happen again with solo travel just try it once you just have to try it you don't have to like if you don't love it that's okay if you hate it i hope you don't hate it but just try it once and see what happens i think it's better to say that you went through experience you said yes versus saying no and having that regret so i say just go for it try it once and yeah you'll see what happens the magic will, will happen will appear after that <laughs> Hey you! Hello beautiful people! My name is Savannah, but I'm Erin and I go by Savvy C and welcome or welcome back to Savvy C Scoop. Hello everyone, how are you? I'm gonna wait a minute for more people to get on board of this live. My name is Marcel, I'm a member of the World Packers team. Uh, this week we're gonna make a series of lives actually talking about different teams with some of our best travelers. Uh, everything that involves solo traveling and volunteering, so you, if you have any doubts, we are going to solve them, okay? Uh, this week actually is a great opportunity for you guys who are aiming to travel, but it's being holded back for some reason, because we're running a campaign that goes until May 31st, that is a three more months campaign, so if you subscribe now, you get extra three months of subscription, so instead of a year, you're gonna have 15 months, okay? And with this saving scoop here, this promo code, you get an extra $10 discount, so you are gonna be able to travel for 15 months for only $39, okay, with Ford Packers. If you guys have any questions, you can send it here, okay? So we're gonna solve them to you. And today, on this first live, we're gonna have Savannah joining us. Savannah is a full-time traveler since 2023. She talks about a lot about solo traveling on her socials. And she also has a call booking service to help other people to travel, especially women. So she's gonna talk about her experience here, volunteering. And she recently made a two-month trip to Mexico with Fort Packers and she loved it. So she's also going to talk about, uh, as Mexico has such a bad press of being like a dangerous country, she's going to talk about some preconceptions that we have uh, on certain cultures and what's the reality about traveling solo as a girl, okay? So thank you guys for joining us. Let me put her here too with us. Uh... join us i'm from brazil actually hello good morning i'm fine too thanks for asking so savannah please introduce yourself here too yes hi everyone morning afternoon evening wherever you are in the world where you're watching this my full name is Savannah, Savannah Cooper, but on the internet, I go by Savvy C, everyone calls me Savvy. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. in the United States, but for, like Marcel said, since March 2023, I have been traveling solo. I first started in Europe, in Lisbon, and then I went from Lisbon, Portugal, all the way out as far east as to Belgrade, Serbia. And in the past two months, I did my first ever World Packers opportunity in San Miguel de Ande, Mexico. And so yeah, that's a bit about me. That's amazing. What are you in the world right now? So right now, actually, funny enough, I'm at my grandparents' house. <laughs> um, oh, so I'm nice. back home in the States. <laughs> it's kind of boring right now, but um, I'm getting ready for my next trip. I don't get to go home as often, so when I do, I try to make the best of it. So, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have some quality time with your family. Too, exactly. exactly. Traveling okay. full time. <laughs> and you started, as we said, in March of 2023, right? Uh, yeah. You have been to all of these places that you said so far, and which place did you like the most? Oof, that's always a tough question, yes. but I would say I have so many favorites, but my favorite of the favorites is the country of Slovenia. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really? The, the food, the locals, 
um, just the architecture, the history there, there's so much to do. It's just a small country, um, but there's so much to see and do there. It's really underrated, and I always recommend that people go see Slovenia. So I'd say that's my favorite by far. Amazing yeah. that you've been there. I'm actually in Sao Paulo, Brazil right now. It's like the biggest city in Latin America, but it's so oh, cold yeah. here, and I'm such a Brazilian summer beach boy, you know? I'm like, oh my God, I have to get away I feel that, yeah. as soon as possible. <laughs> For anything like <laughs> under like 25 degrees is like cold. Like no, yeah, <laughs> that's I winter. Can't handle it. <laughs> so, so Savannah, thank you so much again for accepting this invitation to, for being here with us today, yeah, talking a little about your experiences. And first of all, I would like to understand more about where this desire of you to travel to get on board of this adventure came from and how was the decision process for you to hit the road so mm -hmm. when and why did you decide to embrace this whole idea of traveling solo absolutely so i would say it actually started when i was younger um thanks to my family and thanks to my mom i joke that she passed down like the traveling gene to me and um, my mom's one of four siblings i didn't have enough money or like time to travel as much and so we made this bucket list goal when I was young to see all 50 states before I graduated high school and so now I'm only missing one uh, I've been to 49 of the 50 states really? so doing all the yeah I know That's guys awesome. guess in the oh, comments or you can guess too what state do you think I haven't been to oh uh, but yeah and so growing up doing those trips with my mom it really just instills in me this the beauty of adventure meeting new people trying new foods traveling and so that kind of planted the seed and then ironically enough with covid it changed the world as we know it changed our lives yeah i was gonna go into like the typical corporate america route and like do the you know traditional path but because of covid that changed and so instead i moved to paris for my studies and then in moving to Paris, that introduced me obviously to life in Europe and how easy it is to travel there. And then I, funny enough, I was gonna, uh, or I did, I went to Barcelona in Santorini for my birthday and the friend who came with me, she was two days late unexpectedly, like her flight got changed. And so my first solo trip wasn't planned. So like I became- Oh, so okay, a two day little solo um, trip. Amazing. So, but it worked out great. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so that was my first quote unquote official. And then I started again in May 2023 with um, a three month contract that I had with this great company called Europe's Famous Hostels. It's nice. like a network of hostels in Europe. And so I worked with them making content for their TikTok account in exchange for staying at different hostels across Europe. And so that really got me into this world of solo traveling and combining it with work and so what i'm doing now amazing how old are you actually so that was a three-month contract so from march 1st to like last like last week of may like may 28th may 29th oh okay yeah. and how old are you now i'm 25 now oh nice you're young and you have such an amazing journey. I'm trying, I'm trying. Yeah, I'll be 26 <laughs> in July. Um, Shouts to my cancer, so cool. Um, but yeah. <laughs> That's the spirit. And some people here are asking if was Alaska the only state that you Oh, have yes, you guys so are far. correct. Sorry, I need to look at the, <laughs> look at the comments more. But yes, correct. I've not been to Alaska yet, so I need to, to make the trip. <laughs> oh, wait, where are you guys? Trip. Where are you guys watching from? Like, I don't know, in the comments, like, let us know where you're watching from. Yes, please tell us. So amazing, then. And talking about a little about this process of your, like, aiming to travel in solo, what, what, what was your biggest personal challenge in this process? Oh, great question. I would say just building the confidence to do things by myself. I always tell people with solo traveling, you do meet people really easily, especially if you stay at hostels or do things like well packers, we have experiences, but you do have to start everything yourself and that can be mm -hmm. really direct. So it's like you gotta go to the airport by yourself, go to the like book accommodation, you gotta get go to the meet go to a meal by yourself, eat you know, eat out by yourself. And so building that confidence up was really nerve wracking because like you look left, you look right, you're like, okay, it's just me, like no one else. So I think building up that confidence to make that decision to to go out and do it 
And yeah, so once I got over that, that was really tough for me. So that was the initial thing. And the second was my safety, of course, because, you know, especially the past two months I was in Mexico, you hear all these stories. And it's like, oh, the second I get down there, like El Chapo and the cartel are going to, you know, recruit me. And like, oh, my God, no. Gonna happen. I was like, oh, no. I was like, scared. I was like, no, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. But, like, my family and everyone, understandably so. Um, in a caring way, out of love, or just, you know, a bit concerned about my safety and well-being as a solo female traveler. But thankfully, I'm really happy to share and report that not only was it so safe, I felt so welcome, I had a perfect two months. It was my first time going with Roll Packers, and I loved it. Everyone was so welcoming, supportive, encouraging. Um, and, yeah, I just felt so welcomed and didn't feel so out of place or uh, yeah just felt really welcomed and i'm glad that i went for it you know i think things in the media they come from something obviously they're not making up those stories but as easy you can maybe get involved in like the wrong crowd you can easily avoid that stay safe and still have a full experience so that's what I and it's also funny because we always have this bad advice from people that have never been to those places right okay. and it's like oh my god i've seen on television that it's dangerous and you should be careful don't go there and exactly you know, we were like yeah. oh no please. exactly exactly it's like the same people is that he's like he's got to talk to like oh Love you, love you from a distance, but like the sit, I feel like the people who don't even have a passport, let alone haven't been to the place, are solely judging it off of a few videos they've seen or just headlines that they read. I really think that's yes. nice. Um, so yeah, I always just tell people just try it and go for it. Um, anyways, do your research, of course, and be safe, but but go for it and experience it for yourself rather than letting someone else's opinions dictate if you go or not. Yes, that's right. Thank you for this advice, actually. And actually, it's nice for you to say that this confidence of doing things by yourself was a main issue for you to take your first step traveling, because most people who travel with us suffer a little before from fears of like being lonely and of running out of money. So have you suffered yeah. from either of these two? Yeah, so I I think maybe for the first one, I kind of have like a cheat code. I'm an only child, <laughs> um, <laughs> so maybe none of that's like relatable. Um, so, you know, doing things alone is kind of my thing. Um, joking aside, I am a very social person though. So what I would do and say for that case, if you're scared of being alone or just, yeah, just are scared to be by yourself, stay at hostels, you know, join a World Packers experience, go on a walking tour. Things like that are really easy to meet people, especially when you're meeting other travelers who are in the same position as you. They're a for fellow foreigner. They pick the same place you did, and they're staying at the same place that you did. So you already have something in common with them. So it's a lot easier to, to meet people that way. And then as for money, I so yeah, I, I'm kind of a bit um, untraditional, non-traditional nomad. I didn't like quit my like fancy corporate job and do all this stuff. Instead, I was able to combine the two. So I was able to combine my passion and love for traveling, particularly now solo traveling, with my work and marry the two together. So um, I would yeah, suggest that and through my videos and my content, I suggest and share ways to make money, like tutoring a language online, whether it be working in content, social media manager, graphic designer. There's so many um, working in tech, tech jobs, things like that. There's so many ways, especially with COVID, after COVID, to have remote jobs and have money um, to keep your travels going. And then another big part, too, about doing something like World Packers, a huge finance, a huge stressor is really you don't have to worry about accommodations and meals and things like that. So that helps a lot as well. Yes, that's nice, actually, for you to say, too. And this thing of like this fear of being lonely at start is like common for to all of the people because I've backpacked here in Brazil for two years mm. and it was right after COVID. So I was like, oh my God, should I go now? Will Wait. I make friends? Will I be able to interact with people? I don't know how my social skills are Wait, yeah, like from COVID, from quarantine. <laughs> and then I got to Bahia at first and it was like in a hostel and it's a community of people doing everything with you and at the same uh, 
time of life than you, so you're never alone, actually. Exactly. And sometimes you want to be alone and you can. You, like, put some earphones and people go like, Marcel, hey, come here, too. It's hard, but it's this, amazing. This is so true. I tell people this all the time. Like, it's so funny. Like, I've had so many times where it's like, I actually need to be solo. Like, I have to put the solo in solo traveling. <laughs> like, I can't go on any more pub crawls. Like, no more tours. I just need to, like... You have to hide yourself so, sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> but, like, hide, lock away, ear, like, I, I, um, eye mask, earplugs, like, hide away. Netflix <laughs> away from everything. Yes, so yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> but it's amazing actually. And it's nice, as you said, like how we manage to discover some talent yeah. traveling that we never like how can I say this involves in us before. Yeah. With and you didn't know you had it. Like yes. tell me one that you discovered. Like when you were doing your pack packing in Brazil, like what's something you learned about yourself? Actually I I got myself into the content creation world too and I was like doing some budget traveling videos and showing the reality where I was. I was in an echo village inner Bahia once that it was like um, three hour a day internet. We don't have communication. The showers were with like waterfall water oh, wow. and the food was like no industrialized food, no <laughs> flour, no meat, no only organic. And it was like amazing. We actually, the bathroom in this place was like to uh, a dry bathroom. I don't know oh. if you oh, managed yes. to live this before, <laughs> but like you go to the bathroom and then you have to throw like sand and things above it. And it was like when I talked to this online, people were like saying, Where is it? I want to do this. Oh my yeah. God, how brave you are. <laughs> and then like I got 10,000 followers doing this and I saw a way to make money there from it too. But, and then we like, like, I was never the camera person, you know? And then we managed to do a lot of things. And also like being a waiter, being everything that people invite us to do. Wait. We're never without money if we are with the guts to do things, it's right? Exactly, very true. I feel like, and that's a great point too, I've learned of like, when you kind of take that first leap, that first step, you'll be shocked at what opens up to you. Like people you meet, opportunities that come your way. There's been so many things I've learned or just discovered from like a hostel roommate or someone I met through World Packers. And it's just like, oh, like, what do you do? And it's like, oh, I do this if you want to join. And like, it's just, it's, it's magic. You know, it's like yeah. the magic of travel. Like you just meet yes, people. you make some yeah. amazing connections. Then you learn to be open to possibilities too, right? Exactly. So amazing, then. Mm -hmm. And speaking a little about traveling alone, you told me last week when we were combining this that you're a very cautious person, yeah. right? So what's the process like for you to travel alone as a woman? Yeah. So I would say I'm still a bit anxious at times. Yeah, I'm just a girl, <laughs> um, but I do have a lot more confidence, but still just that initial, you know, feeling. I think it's both excitement and nervous energy of like, oh my gosh, I'm going to this place for the first time by myself, don't know anyone. And when I get to any new place, especially for the first time or just when I'm solo traveling, I'm always just aware of my surroundings. I no longer, you know, stay inside, lock myself inside, nor am I scared, but I am aware of my surroundings. So what I do, I always have like my headphones in with like no music playing, have sunglasses on, keep my, my personal belongings near me. And if anyone asks me like, oh, are you traveling solo? No, just, you know, say I'm not traveling solo. It's like, oh, I'm here with my mother. Here's my boyfriend. Here's my friends. Like, which, you know, unfortunately is the, the world we live in. But it's just important to say that you're, you know, with other people so that they don't, you know, kind of, you know, point you out or like maybe want to target you for something that's so good and then also too i make sure that on the social side of things i do things like i've said it a million times now but staying in hostels doing world packers experiences so that i can be social and meet other people who are like-minded so who like we we're saying earlier that are open to traveling are in the same place they pick that destination for a reason um, and that way I have like a group and community around me. Um, and then I also make sure that someone back home, a few people back home as well as the place where I'm staying at currently have my location. So that's the beauty of like social media and traveling and, you know, phones. 
that, you know, I can have my friends track my location. Um, and yeah, little things like that I do to make sure that I can still have a full experience as a woman solo traveling, but I'm also safe and mindful of my surroundings. Amazing. That's it. And what advice would you give to the women watching us who like haven't yet traveled for the fear of this lack of safety? Yeah, so I would say overall, I mean, unfortunately, the world we, we don't live in Barbie land, right? So I wish in a perfect world it would be, you know, safe for women worldwide. But I wouldn't, I would say don't let the fear or the potential of that fear stop you from wanting to solo travel. It's so doable. It's very possible. And just all you have to do is just suggest how you carry yourself. So like I said earlier, I put headphones in, I wear sunglasses. I always know where I'm going. I have service. My phone's charged. Someone has my location back home. Um, I don't tell people that I'm traveling solo. Um, I travel during daylight hours. So if I'm flying into a new place, I arrive at daylight hours. I leave at daylight hours. And you, like you're saying too, you'll be shocked at what opens up to you and what happens when you take that first chance to take that leap. So don't let that fear hold you back. You can be safe. You're more um, aware and more capable of doing things than you realize. Before my first one, I didn't think I could ever do what I'm doing now. Like if 2020 me met 2024 me, I would be shook. But um, it, it's possible, it's doable. Um, and as long as you just make the right decisions, you'll have a great time. Oh, amazing. It's like, that's it. We have to find our ways to not let fear stop us from following our dreams, right? It's mm -hmm. very easy for me as a man to say, yeah. it, but it's beautiful mm -hmm. to see you as a woman, like encouraging other people to do the same and to live the experiences that we uh, deserve to live, right? And Absolutely. that's awesome. And speaking of which, you... Oh, no, please. Go um, on. I just Sorry to cut you off. I was just thinking another great reason too to start maybe your first time with World Packers or your next solo trip with Solar Packers is they have like things like the safeguard in place where you can always reach out to someone. They have reviews. They've verified the host, talked to the host. And when you get to these experiences, other people are already there. So I think that always helps as well of like when you get to a place, there's already some level of familiarity. There's some you know, yeah, support system, backup, someone you can call and reach out to that really eases your nerves versus just wandering out into like the wilderness <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> yeah, and that's one of our purposes actually to help people to travel with uh, in a safer way, right? So you can <laughs> see what other travelers think about the host you're aiming to go on and think like this, exactly. amazing. And speaking of which, you've lived over Packers experience in Mexico, mm -hmm. right? So, which is a place that, as we told before, that has a bad press of being a dangerous country. So what do you have to say about that? Is it really a dangerous country? It's not. I, and I was so nervous before. Like when I, I feel like once I landed, it hit me. I'm like, oh, I'm here. Like, you know, when you like, it really hits you until you get there. But I, I'm happy to report, happy to share that Mexico is not what you see on the news. Um, that is a part of it, of course. There is, you know, there's there's violence, there's gangs, there's drug, you know, cartels around the world, but it's so much more than that. And the Mexican people are so hospitable, so welcoming, really friendly to me and to other foreigners. And it's a beautiful country that I really um, regret and it's sad that a lot of people are scared to go there for what they see on the news. So I'd say go experience it for yourself. Obviously do your research and, you know, look into it further, but be open to that experience and experience the country for yourself. That's I'd be like my best advice. And I'm glad that I took the chance and went to Mexico because if not, I would have been still afraid to do so. Oh, that's amazing. And uh, how was your World Packers experience yeah. in Mexico? Tell us a little more about yeah, it. Yeah, so it was my first ever one. It was kind of like, I feel like, perfect meant to be. So it was my first time being a World Packers volunteer, and it was my host first time being a World Packers host. So it was kind of like perfect, you know, like we were both, it was both our first time. I was volunteering in the city called San Miguel de Ande, and it's about four hours north of Mexico City. 
And she owned a hotel. The name her host, um, her name is Michelle, the host. She owned a hotel and they needed help with their social media. So she had this beautiful property in this gem of a city that's kind of in the middle of nowhere, you know? Right. If you like know San Diego, you know. If not, it's like you've never heard of it. <laughs> So she like had this beautiful place, so much to share, but no one to really get the word out. And so that's where I came in. And so I was able to live in this hotel, living in the hotel room, Marcel, like living my best life um, for free and just making content, promoting the hotel, sharing the features of it, and also sharing the city of Miguel, of San Miguel and what it offers to those who visit. So that was the bulk of my duties. And it was so much fun. I mean, I was able to meet guests as they came and welcome them, go to local events, Easter passed while I was there, so it was really cool to experience in the city. So it was honestly, it was a dream, a dream experience. I couldn't have asked for, for better. Oh, that's incredible. And how was the process for choosing, of choosing this opportunity? <laughs> Yeah, so it was really easy, really direct, straightforward. I knew I wanted to be somewhere in either Mexico or other parts of Central Latin America. So I applied to about 15 opportunities in Mexico, Nicaragua, and Guatemala. And so this was actually the first one I heard back from. So I was like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> um, and so we messaged back and forth. And then I was looking at other opportunity in Nicaragua as well. But this one seemed a bit better, better fit. And that she asked me three questions on the application, then we emailed back and forth, and we were like approved, all good to go. I came there, she hugged me when I first walked in, and it was like perfect. Oh, that's nice. So it worked out great. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And we actually always advise people who are like applying to some opportunities that they should apply from three to five opportunities so they have okay. the biggest, yeah. a bigger chance of approval. So it's nice for you to say that you've applied to 15. Yeah, I was like, I didn't know it was my first one. So I was like, I'm just going to apply to everyone and just, you know, fingers crossed that someone, you know, and goes back to you. where life puts you in, right? Exactly. I was like, I'm going to shoot my shot, so hit those DMs. <laughs> and hopefully, oh, someone's in Monterey. Yeah, that's in Northern Mexico. I'm looking at the comments now. I've been ignoring them. <laughs> Nice. And what are your plans for the coming month? Yes, I'm very excited. Um, June is Saturday, which is crazy. This year has been flying by. Um, I'm excited that in mid-June, I will be starting my second World Packers experience, where I'll be a yoga teacher and a part-time receptionist at a hostel in Guatemala. So I'm very excited. I'll be doing that for a month there, and I'm really looking forward to it. So if any of you guys have tips, on Guatemala, what to see, what to do, hit me up, find my DMs. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna be, of course, posting about it and sharing about um, my time there. So I'm really looking forward to it. So that's what's up next. Amazing. I'm looking forward to see you living this experience too. And, and there's here, the Kim Graf is asking oh, yeah. us like quick test question for you. Why do you travel solo instead of with at least one friend? Good question. So kind of, going back to why I accidentally got into solo travel in the first place was plans changed and people weren't able to come with me. And I was kind of tired, honestly, of waiting on people or, you know, being like, oh, let's plan this trip, let's plan this, let's plan this. And then it never leaves the group chat. Like, have you seen those memes where it's like, when it leaves the group chat, like it felt like it was never leaving. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna try and you can always try and just see how I like it, see how I find it, and I loved it. I love that I had the flexibility to dictate my schedule, I didn't have to compromise on anything. Um, I didn't have to, yeah, like be like, oh, you know, let's do this. And I'm like, mm, I'm not really up for it. Or like, you can wake up one day and you wanna be lazy, or you can wake up one day and wanna be like, the most like adventurous person and go on like 12 hikes, you know, it, it depends. So I love the flexibility uh, and the independence that solo travel gives me. No, the independence is the number one for me like it's the best you want and anytime you want to and like oh i want to go there you go with no one like oh no exactly let's go to the beach right now yeah exactly it's like no we are going <laughs> you know so exactly and that's and that's a great part too of like you don't have to yeah you don't have to run your decisions by anyone you can just get up and go so i love that part of it but but always like you may make big connections there we'll make some friends and 
you're never alone as we said before too so. exactly i always tell people like especially if you're like into nightlife or you like go out to eat like meeting bartenders waiters waitresses hosts they're the best people to meet like they know everyone they can like get you into places they have the best <laughs> yes <laughs> The receptionist, that like whatever you're saying, those are the best people to, to me. <laughs> and there's another question here. Yeah. Uh, I, this is mm -hmm. a tougher one, like from SNNE age. How to start this? I'm completely new for this. I don't know from where to start, what to do. How can you advise her? Yeah, that's a great way. So I would say a best way, a great way to start would be with Roll Packers. Um, so I would say do research on what type of experience you're looking for. So maybe you want to do something based in nature or you want to go to a city or go like coastside. I would say where you want to go, what type of experience you want. Do your research on that place. So look into um, places you can stay, the cost of it, local language, if it's different from a language you speak. Um, the money, so money conversions, if it's expensive or not, things like that. Um, and then either through World Packers and maybe like want to do like a hostel stay, apply and look at what experiences are available to you. And you can either do it through an experience with World Packers or just do it um, on your own, like staying at a hostel and then booking tours and experiences. I think that's the best way to get started of just doing that research, ask questions. You're already like watching the slide, which is a great way. Um, and just, yeah, go from there. That's so nice. Uh, thank you so much for being here today oh, again. It's thank so nice you. to hear from you. Like, Thanks for watching. Very brave Bye. person. No, it's our pleasure. And if you, to everyone who's here, like if you're rehearsing for a trip, this is a great time, as I told you in the beginning of this live, because World Packers is running a, com a campaign now in May that will go until May 31st. Mm -hmm. That whoever who signs up now will win an extra three months of subscription so instead of a year you have 15 months to travel and here at the pin comment you have the savannah's promo code the savings yeah. group oh. use this that you will have extra ten dollars so it's gonna be like 39 dollars to travel for 15 months so it's amazing uh, if you have any further questions too send savannah yes. some dms that she's gonna answer you guys she's this amazing person that you're seeing and also she your tiktok is like your main social media right yeah let's see you talk in youtube i'm on instagram just like for dms and stories but posting mainly on my tiktok and youtube channel which are the same the savvy c scoop it's always the same across all my platforms so yeah go check me out there and or yeah dm me any questions you have and love to help Please follow her, send you all your doubts. This is going to help you use her promo code, like take a print screen of this, a screenshot of this live. And uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say, to talk about that we passed over? I said it once before, but I'll say it again. I'm going to Guatemala soon, so if you have any tips recommendations i've done some research but i'd love to have more so if you have any send them my way happy to receive um and like last piece of advice before we go if you're on the fence about solo traveling this year if you want to start it but you're scared to i'd say i'd say look at it like this think of it as something you've done and think of something you've done in the past where you had the opportunity or the chance to do something but you said no or you talked yourself out of it and you now feel regret from not going through with that opportunity don't let that happen again with solo travel just try it once you just have to try it you don't have to like if you don't love it that's okay if you hate it i hope you don't hate it but just try it once and see what happens i think it's better to say that you went through experience, you said yes, versus saying no and having that regret. So I say just go for it, try it once, and yeah, you'll see what happens. The magic will, will happen, will appear after that. <laughs> You're amazing. Thank you so Thank much you. for the speech. <laughs> and everyone, tomorrow at the same time, we'll have another live with yeah. Jess from Travels with Jess. And she's going to talk about traveling solo at 18. So, mm. like, today we. 
had the traveling as a woman and tomorrow the traveling solo at 18. Jazz has mm -hmm. 18 years old and she's already Incredible. going to so many places Just by herself. <laughs> and it's amazing like for the people who is in this gap time between high school and what should I do next? Absolutely. To embrace an adventure and discover seeing the world. So it's going to be a great talk too. And Savannah, <laughs> last but not least, <laughs> Please come to Brazil when you get it. Yes, oh my gosh, I really want to you. go. I really want to. See you, see you, see you. I will, I will, I will. <laughs> you have to come, come to Bahia. You're going to love everything here. I will. And we, it, it, it's going to be a pleasure to have you here. So, if you hear a knock on the door, it's me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please come, okay? So thank you, Marcel. Obrigada. Ciao, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. Nice. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, too. See you guys tomorrow. Bye, Savannah. Bye-bye.